Aloha, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it's I'm the one and only Knuckles DQ now here and I'm of course back for some more yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos here folks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the extra video for Knuckles Chaotix. And as you can tell, we're going to be hit on to the color test settings. Now once you insert the certain amount of codes, you will be able to actually access to the stage selection screen now. And here you can able to actually go to whatever what stage you're going to be entering into, as well as some different amount of characters you can able to go along with that, in addition to the actual, uh, the Kambi, uh, character, as well as the forms of the day and night system. So you can at least manage to able to set those from there. And, um, and there's also a, uh, a very peculiar secret special playable character. And that will have to be by the forms of known as Star 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 Star. <laughs> That's what I usually calls that. But either way, though, I'm very curious to see what that particular playable character is going to be like. So even then, though, I will showcase specifically. Uh, let's go for Speed Slider, just in case it makes things a little bit more funner. And um, hopefully, we should be able to actually just, uh, you know what I mean. See the particular star 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 character. As far as you guys should probably already know by that point. So anyway, uh let's go for uh not level six because it's unaccessible, so Well this sure is a white echidna with red boxing gloves and he has red eyes it looks like. The car reminds me of one of those Sonic, Sonic comic characters called Dr. Phinipus or Phinipus, Phinipus, uh, I don't know how you pronounce it because I haven't read those, honestly. But anyway, folks, um, Phinipus here, <laughs> whatever you want to call him that, cannot be played. I tried with every character throughout the whole game, including double gangers of themselves, and every time when you load the game, it just sort of gets stuck here. I'm guessing that makes the question, at least not on my emulator, or even the actual 32X, but as far as I'm aware, you can't play as him. Look at him. Metal Sonic. Remember Sonic CD, whenever you're able to get an instant game over if you manage to wait for about 3 minutes? Well, if you waited for about, let's just say, about 1 in a minute, well, 1 minute in particular, this happens. Oh gosh, it's Metal Sonic. It gets rid of your partner instantly. And now for the bad ending. Uh, basically if you don't collect all six of those Chaos Rings, basically what happens is, is the fact that the actual giant ring is actually shown up in the center, and most of these Chaos Rings you've collected has been completely destroyed. And every once in a while, Dr. Robotnik, alongside with Metal Sonic Kai, he basically just conquers the whole entire, well, High Metropolis Zone or something like that. I'm not exactly 100% sure if I like to call it that. But look at this. This is all devastating. It's also kind of dark as well. Even then though, to be expected with most of the uh, bad endings in certain Sonic games as far as I'm aware. But anyway, in this quest sequence, it's the fact that it gets like a Metal Sonic Kai hopping around in that particular town and what have you, and yeah, he did manage to demolish everything, so yeah, that's the bad ending if you don't have all the, uh, the Chaos Rings in one hand, so still kind of depressing. Amy Rose, uh, remember the forms of certain, uh, Sonic games, as you know, there's actually a sound test where, where you can once again listen to some very cool musical tracks here and there, such as Door to Summer, as well as Speed of Sound, and you probably get the idea of how this goes. But, if you insert these little, uh, color test codes, as you can see on screen, and if you insert those correctly, you would able to actually get something very surprising for those of you who are familiar with, uh, Sonic CD before. And that is Amy Rose, and there she is right here, and she was dancing along, in addition to that, she also said, Cool, sweet, and catchy. So yeah, that seems a pretty cool extra thing, especially noticeable if you ever, uh, well, I'm sure most people have never actually played this game before, especially because this was on a very, very poor received Sega 32X add-on, and, um, you should uh, probably be able to check that out. So, a bit either way, though, um, that's as far as extra things are concerned in terms of Knuckles Chaotix, that's just pretty much how this goes, basically. So, if I were you, uh, yeah, an, an alright game, but even then, though, I just want to move on to, uh, by the, uh, the next year of 2021, which should be up tomorrow. Speaking of such, though, this is the final video for the likes of 2020 at this point. 
And because of this though, I'll leave you guys to it with a nice little music of Speed of Sound based off from Speed Slider Zone. And uh, that's pretty much how this goes basically. So um, on to you Mr. Muxy for the discussion about the final thoughts of 2020 as a result. So I'll leave you to it. Hey everybody, this is me, Maxi here, from the likes of the Maxi Toys here, and, uh, this is it. This is gonna be the final day of 2020, and I'll give you guys my, uh, final thoughts of the whole entire year. I know this, uh, ne Knuckles Chaotix, uh, extra video is super short, so I just wanna cut to the point and jump straight into the forms of the massive discussion about what's my final thoughts of 2020 as a result, so... I know, I know you guys are probably looking for it until 2021, but, um, let's just get this started, shall we? Now, during the course of the forms of the whole entire year of 2020, I consider able to actually play in the games a lot the most. Because there is actually by the forms of the actual release of the PlayStation 5, as well as the Xbox Series X. I do like whenever they do manage to able to sell those two game consoles again, just like in 2013, but let's get into the actual good stuff out of the way first. Uh, the good part about 2020 is that, uh, obviously the beginning portion is actually really, really alright. Especially noticeable for the United Kingdom, like January to February, and, uh, well, let's just say the halfway point in March. And I will say, though, those months are solid, for the most part. But, it wasn't until when, uh, 20th of March came around, the same year, the same day as when Animal Crossing New Horizons came around, this is what the massive big problem we have with the forms of, uh, 2020 as a result. The coronavirus slash, uh, you know, COVID-19 pandemic. That might be, seems a bit, uh, different compared to the forms of how it does it on the previous years, for sure. But unfortunately though, one of my biggest problems I have with the whole entire year itself will have to be the whole, uh, the structure of the year itself. Like, we'll point things out whenever we get into it, but, uh, the game selections is once again well done for the most part, especially noticeable they actually bring in some new titles to the table, such as of course Crash Bandicoot for It's About Time, as well as the, the most popular game of the whole entire year, which will have to be by the forms of um, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Which, I I'm, I'm, don't know if I'm miles able to play that game personally, but either way though, it's a nice little distraction I suppose, even especially noticeable during the lockdown and all that stuff. Also, the Final Fantasy VII Remake is actually a really pleasant surprise for the actual Final Fantasy VII Remake. That could be also say it applies to Resident Evil 3 Remake as well, but... Um, Usually they all just uh, remakes, not just the forms of a brand new game or something. Well, at least they do have a different engine of some sort like this. I'm not exactly 100% sure, just because I haven't really played those games, because I'm more into the Kingdom Hearts stuff than most. And also other games here and there as well, such as uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition on the Nintendo Switch, as well as uh, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Mikibi Bottom Rehydrated, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, and as well as the forms of, uh, well, just any single, uh, ports slash emulator, uh, well, remastered ports, for that matter, I think it seems to work out just fine, even especially noticeable with, uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which is my biggest highlight of, of the forms of this whole entire year, even for the actual, uh, despite the fact that it was actually emulated to begin with. Also, we got ourselves Paper Mario of the Origami King, which is actually pretty an alright game, but nowhere near as masterpiece as uh, The Thousand Year Door was. Unfortunately though, one of my biggest problems I have with the actual game announcements though, especially like, compared to the forms of last year, is the fact that we actually got ourselves some really solid Nintendo Direct announcements. Unfortunately though, one of my biggest problems I have with Nintendo Directs for this year is the fact that we're going to be keep on seeing partner showcases over and over and over again. I get it because of the forms of the actual COVID-19 might able to have something to do with that, but most of the time it feels kind of uh, repetitive at the same time, especially noticeable if you really be hyped about the forms of the actual normal Nintendo Directs like we used to back then, but most of the time it just feels incredibly bare bones to me. 
Although the biggest highlight of the forms of Nintendo Direct series to me, it will have to be by the forms of the Super Mario Bros. 35th Anniversary Special, which I will say that was the biggest highlight for me. Because to be expected, that's the thing I'm really looking forward to in terms of the forms of Nintendo Direct announcements. Also, same applies to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate uh, Direct here and there as well. However, though, most people complain about the forms of the choice of Biolift to be one of the first DLC character choice in 2020, which is somewhat of a mixed bag. But ultimately, though, I'm pretty much used to it at this point. Yeah, I know it's kind of stupid to able to actually have that character choice to begin with, because it's especially noticeable when it's another Fire Emblem character, so I thought to myself, what's the point of that? Min Min was actually a pretty good choice, even on as the uh, the arms character. After all, Spring Man is going to be trapped inside the assist trophy, after all. And also, recently, Steve and Alex from Minecraft is actually a really alright choice as well. Even though that some people might be able to prefer Sora from Kingdom Hearts, but we'll see what happens until 2021. And speaking of such though, when it comes to film releases on that particular matter, they aren't the worst things I've ever seen, but, um... The biggest highlight for me though is specifically Sonic the Hedgehog the movie 2020 because since I was a huge fan of the Sonic the Hedgehog stuff since I was a kid and after all I'm very very glad that I managed to be able to see that film on the big screen just before when the lockdown exists. And most of the other films aren't too bad but it's just that well one of them in particular really disappoints me the most and that will have to be the Mulan remake. Because seriously, who the hell are you able to fall to make it much more violent in comparison to the animated counterparts, which is essentially for about 22 years old in that time. And also the, Sponge, the, the Spongebob movie, Sponge on a Run, is actually an okay film, but not my kind of film of choice in my opinion. And also the Scoop film is actually not that great. And uh, Trolls World Tour, while well, I'm not a big fan of the Trolls uh, series as a result, but the biggest highlight of the, in terms of the forms of the films industry will have to be by the forms of Invi The Invisible Man onward, and especially recently during Christmas time, Soul, during the forms of the Disney Plus. I get it because of the forms of the actual COVID-19 was actually still the case, but uh, usually relatively speaking, that my, my only biggest problem with the forms of the film selections is that some of the other films get essentially get delayed, until specifically next year, or even a couple of years as for now. Like, for instance, for example, No Time to Die is no longer releasing in 2020, it's now been pushed back, twice. And same applies to Fast and Furious 9, which I was really looking forward to able to see in that particular film, after seeing the 8th movie, even though despite I've not seen a spin-off movie as far as the actual traditional kind of stuff, and all that stuff. And, um... It's just that, usually relatively speaking, is that I always care for uh, Sonic the Hedgehog movie the most. And because of that, I managed to still have it on DVD and Blu-ray for the sake of the forms of enjoyable replayability. And eventually, they'll be making a sequel until 2022, which I'm looking forward to that. And unfortunately though, some other um, problems I have with the whole entire year will have to be the whole... Uh, closure of things, specifically another thing is kind of delayed is of course the actual most highly anticipated theme parks of all time, which appears to be by the forms of Super Nintendo World, which originally it was supposed to be uh, there for the sake of 2020, but now it's been delayed until spring 2021. But uh, at least we haven't got that long to it though, even for the Japan only uh, kind of announcement, uh, or in this case amusement park, um, it's only Universal Studios of Japan. I mean, usually, relatively speaking, I don't mind um, having that at all. And uh, most of the time, though, it's just the fact that whenever some news always keeps on mentioning about the coronavirus in the here and now, it just feels kind of like a bit too much for my taste. And also, because of how the fact that every time whenever I go to shopping and stuff like that, most of the time I'm gonna have to be able to utilize the actual face mask all the time. And especially noticeable with the face shield every once in a while. So that way I can able to breathe a little bit better. But still, regardless of such though, it's the fact that whenever when um, the coronavirus keeps on popping up on news broadcast, I mean, usually because of this though, um, do you honestly think that coronavirus existence was a good idea? But without a doubt, one of my biggest complaints with the whole entire year will have to be the whole structure of the year itself. We've all seen it. 
A lot of these days, months, and a whole year can go absolutely nowhere in terms of progressioning or even hypeness as a matter of fact. For a year calls it 2020, it should just at least have the most um, promising stuff, especially it's bad enough with the forms of, uh, well, anything else for exciting moments here and there. Nothing freaking happens during the summertime. Mind you, um, expecting to believe about the fact that Super Nintendo World Amusement Park, as well as the Tokyo 2020, uh, the Summer Olympic Games can able to get adjusted things until specifically until next year. But of all the actual seasons I actually went into in terms of uh, 2020 as a result, summer to me though, it just feels like a waste of time for me. Like, obviously it's bad enough that I can't able to go out anywhere, and also it's pretty bare bones version of summer, at least for what I've experienced during the past few years. I mean, usually it kind of feels like, an, uh, like a simple orange juice, although it may taste different, but you're still drinking some orange juice. Because of this, I couldn't even notice about the fact that I couldn't even put uh, summer into my biggest highlight in terms of the forms of the whole year because every single day in summer for my life is pretty much the same. Like, aside from cosmetic uh, events here and there, but most of the time it just feels pretty bare bones and pretty much, I will have to say, I was pretty disappointed with in terms of summer as a result. Especially if it's bad enough that uh, Tokyo 2020 Olympics has been delayed, and also same applies to the lack of announcements or lack of game announcements during an E3, which was supposed to happen, but unfortunately though, things doesn't seem to able to be happening. But my final thoughts in terms of the forms of my top 3 in terms of certain categories I was going to able to mention, the games are easily the best highlights of the whole entire year for me, since there was going to be some exciting parts and some bit of, um, questionable releases, and especially noticeable with the occasional, uh, shadow drops here and there, which always attempt to happen on most cases anyway. The film releases, on the other hand, though, is pretty much in the middle side. Aside from the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, I was attempt to enjoy it the most. Um, the film selection is alright. But I will say, it feels a lot better than the forms of how it does it in last year's disappointing films, specifically with the live-action remakes of, well, the remake live-action remake of The Lion King, for example, but still, I think 2019 has a massive, massive selection, that I think it has a lot more films from last year than it was in this year was. And finally, in the one on the bottom, though, I will say the summer uh, events is actually is the lowest point for me, especially noticeable because of how the fact that, well, it's bad enough that you can't go out anywhere, and plus, not to mention, the uh, you, you can't go out in any other holidays here and there, and especially those boys, bad enough that uh, most of these events have been delayed, or sometimes cancelled in between. But hopefully though, with all this is out of the way, I will still say though, is the fact that 2020 year, as far as the year itself, easily one of the worst years I've ever experienced in my life. But thankfully for the Maxi Toys department though, it still goes pretty strong though, thanks to the forms of our subscribers count is now up to 300 or more subscribers, which I do appreciate it for this point guys, for able to supporting it. And also, one last thing before we move on to 2021, the biggest highlight for this year for me though, is the 10 year anniversary of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic show. Especially since I still managed to adore the show so much, especially after the events of uh, 2012 during December, but I still can able to actually replay those the exact same episodes over and over again, just to bring my smile to my face if I get stressed out with the, you know, the coronavirus slash COVID-19 stuff, stupid shenanigans and all that stuff. But there still might be some COVID-19 during at the very beginning of 2021, but hopefully, though, it doesn't last for very long, thanks to the forms of the actual vaccine stuff, as far as what the actual news reports did actually mention. So, whew, that's a long discussion for this point, guys. I really do apologize for how this, this, this discussion has gone pretty much long enough as it is, but we just want to move on to the next year. So hopefully the next year for 2021 will be a bit better. Especially noticeable for what you expect, more new Let's Plays should be coming up, especially noticeable with some certain remake Let's Plays here and there too. And as well as the forms of some continuations of occasional my video game collection videos and all that stuff. But stay tuned until the forms of February 2021, 
because we're about to be celebrating the 10th year anniversary of the Mexi Toys YouTube channel. So, stay tuned for that, especially noticeable until the 16th of February, according to the actual day. So yeah, this is me, the Maxi, Maxi here from the Maxi Toys. And until then, Happy New Year, and hopefully the New Year should be a good one. Screw you, 2020.